Hello and welcome back to this blender tasty tutorial. Yes, today I'm showing you how to create this little candle flickering type of effect. It's actually super easy. As always, you will find a free resource file in my Gumroad in the description below that you are more than welcome to go and check out, download it for yourself. In any case, let's get into the video. So as you might see, I already have a file ready here, sort of. I've opened it in Blender 3.1. I'm working in the EV engine, as you can see. All of these are just default settings. I'm just gonna turn the ambient occlusion, maybe the bloom, screen space reflections, that's it. The bloom, I'm gonna turn it down a bit because whenever you have bloom in an intense light source, it tends to be very strong. So I'm gonna show you how to use the animation modifiers to actually make your life a bit easier with these little lights. So first of all, I'm gonna add a light and this is gonna be a point light. So I'm gonna go Shift A, add a light and this is gonna be the point light, GZ. And I'm gonna move it so it sits somewhere in the middle of my candle, sort of like that. I can also go into top down view by pressing seven, on my numpad and just centering it there. Let's go into rendered view. So it looks like this, kind of mysterious, a bit of uh, subsurface scattering. I have just super simple principled BSDF surface scattering, subsurface turned to one and a bit of color, nothing fancy, super easy, super simple. So I'm gonna turn the power to be a bit stronger, let's say to a good 60 to 50 watts, something like that where I'm starting to see a bit through the material. You can also adjust the radius. So the stronger the radius, the more it's gonna go through the objects, the smaller, the stronger the light in the middle. I'm gonna opt out for something in between. And the color, maybe I'm gonna change it to this like yellowish, orangish, that type of thing. Now you might be asking, if I play the animation, I'm using Alt A, but in some cases it's gonna be space. So I'm playing the animation, you can see not much is happening because we need to animate this. So I'm gonna set the end of my animation by clicking on the end and setting it, let's say, to 150 frames. I usually go in these increments because I'm doing like 30 FPS usually, so it makes sense to just multiply it. So in this case, it's gonna be like five seconds animation. Now I'm gonna divide my screen by grabbing it, pulling it like that towards the left. And from here on, I'm gonna choose the graph editor, which is this bad boy right here. Now, you don't see appearing anything because we haven't set any keyframes yet. In my case, I'm just gonna stop the animation, go to the beginning, and I'll set the power to be a keyframe. So, so I'm right-clicking on power, insert keyframe, and you can see our keyframe appeared here, point power. Now, nothing is appearing because we actually need to check where our power is. So in our case, you can see that from zero, it's gonna be at 60, because that is the 60 watts that we're working with. So again, if I press play, nothing is happening as usual. However, I'm gonna press N, which is gonna open the sidebar, and I'll go on modifiers, add a modifier, and I'll add a built-in function. So this now pushed it downwards to zero. Basically what it's doing, it's going through an amplitude and it's basically turning off and on the color of this lamp. So what do we do now? We want it to flicker. Basically now we start playing with the amplitude. So amplitude is going to define the strength of our lamp. So I've turned on the sine wave, now everything is happening on it right there. Everything is working within a sinus type of function. So the more I turn the amplitude up, the stronger it's gonna be. But right now it's turning off and on again. It's not flickering. Flickering meaning it cannot go into zero. And right now you can see that if we scrub the timeline, it actually goes to zero in some cases, either minus. What I would suggest in this case is find where your 60 was or rather where your light sweet spot was. And now we need to move it. But how do we move it? We cannot keyframe it differently. Well, we have the value offset, which when we start moving it, we can move it back into where it was. So for example, we have this nice 60 over here. So if I play it now, you can see that it's pulsating and it's giving off that exact effect. So now for further control, we can use the phase multiplier and the phase multiplier basically decides how long the interval is gonna be. 
So this, for example, is like the slower type of fade. It depends on what you actually want in your scene. But the moment you start multiplying it by more, you can see that it starts becoming a bit more dynamic, a bit more flickerish. And here we can start seeing that like a bit stronger flicker. This is usually like, let's say something in the wind, when something is happening, like blowing on it, stuff like that. And again, we can offset the phase if we don't like it. And the best part of this stuff is we can actually make it loopable. So we can just say start at frame one, then end at a frame 150. And the blend in and blend out is how many frames it's going to take for the shape to get into effect and then get out of this effect. An added bonus that you can try here is actually to add another modifier. Yes, you can add another modifier. And in this case, I'm going to put a noise modifier, which you can see actually multiplies with our given sine function. So if I increase the scale, you can see that it's actually affecting the scale of the sine wave. And I can increase the strength to give it less of a homogeneous effect. So basically it starts displacing it a bit more. And again, I strongly suggest you can try playing with the offset. You can try playing with the strength, which is again going to influence how your stuff is going to actually appear in the final animation. Right here, for example, you can now see that the flickers are a bit less homogeneous and basically a bit more dynamic. And again, best part of this is you can just select your objects. Now, for example, I'm going to copy it with Shift D. I'm going to move it to another side. And if I want to have these a bit differently positioned, I can just change the offset of the X of the noise, and then change maybe also the phase offset of the sign, and they will flicker at different intervals. And basically, you can now just do this to all of them. You can duplicate as many as you want. You can duplicate them, put them around the space. And basically, the more you work with this, the more variety you will get. And that's essentially how I do this trick. So hopefully you've learned something useful. Hopefully you've learned something new. These modifiers, when they are put on keyframes, they are extremely fun. You can put them on anything. And usually they wield super, super, super interesting results. So I hope you liked the video. As always, there's a free resource file in the description below that you can download from my Gumroad. And hopefully I'll see you in the next one.